Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and now we are doing the rest of the garden tour. It is done in two parts because it was so long. I had so much I wanted to say. So I figured I'd do it in two parts. You could take a breather and I could take a breather and the sun came out. So it worked out perfect. Still a little cool, but we're going to be warm this weekend, they say. All is going good in the bird garden. I'm just starting to work out here. I'm gonna get squash, probably different types of zucchini growing in here. My broccoli has gone the flower. I leave that for the bees, but you know what? I do pick these little heads off. You know for who. Kitty, my Yorkie, absolutely loves her broccoli. So I'm gonna put that in my pocket and bring it in to her. All in all, I'm really happy with this. Um, all this oh look my fountain turned on isn't that cool i bought this at the thrift store for a couple bucks once it was it belonged to an electric fountain like a little tabletop mount i just put a solar uh, kit on it see there it is up there it's too high i can't get to it to wipe it sometimes on a bucket and it just works good with a bucket lid a bunch of holes and it runs through walking onions as you saw before on the first part they are walking everywhere. I, I can't believe we're going to have a ton of them I'll be collecting soon. But all is going good. Everything you see in here, everything, has been from last year or the year before. I mean, my dinosaur kale, you know, some of it now is like four years old, three, four years old. A lot of this is cuttings from the original plant that died back. These are doing fantastic. These totes are over five years old and they are going strong. Isn't that something? And I, I mean, I've had them for about that long and they came from the thrift store. So I don't even know how old they were, but they're doing good. Like I said, this is all stuff coming back. The celery, the garlic chives, the walking onions. There's broccoli there. This is a beautiful dinosaur kale. Lemon verbena is starting to just bloom again with leaves. Everything is coming back. The mushroom plant, more celery, mint. Who knows, more walking onions, walking all back here. So it's all coming back to life because we are in spring and the weather is getting warmer. So let's kind of walk through. So look, a lot of my solar fountains are turning on. Oh, and the hummingbird just came to visit. He just left real fast. I still feed the birds. You know, this yard has over 50 varieties of small type birds. They come here all year long in and out some are local residents some are just traveling through and migrating through it's amazing i've got a video that i made over a year ago on all the species well not all because there's been more and i'll try to get an update pretty soon too this is an electric fountain the ones you see down here these are all solar so i've got a mix i've only got two electric ones i was going to change my ball one to uh, solar, but I didn't this time. I left it since I've got an outlet there. So I left that, but look at that. That's how simple it is to set up a fountain. A solar fountain kit. You get the kit and all you need is a bowl and rocks. That's it. You don't need anything special. The geraniums are flowering everywhere. Like I said, walking onions everywhere. All through there you see walking onions. I'm going to take out the purple sprouting broccoli. It's dying back. I don't want it. I don't need it. In here I'm going to plant something soon. I'm not going to change anything in this raised bed. All I'm going to do is probably put buckets or add some more leaves from the garden. And with that, it will work perfect and I won't have to turn anything. I don't turn anything. Walking onions, look at this, walking everywhere. Seed came up from some sort of collard kale hybrid. Look at all through here, walking onions everywhere with mint. Oh, I finally got to my lemon balm and I split it. So that worked out really, really well. I've got it split between two. So now I've got two out of one that I bought at the grocery store at that time. More walking onions. See, this is what happens. I stick them in wherever I can. Those are a ton of babies. Those aren't walking because they're just too packed. There's too many in there, so I've got to get them separated. But that's from like the year before. And then these are newer ones that either fell in there or started to grow. This I looked at, I had this, and I'm going to set this up in a bucket and do a vertical garden in here. I'm not sure yet what. Chocolate mint, and yes, this is the strawberry mint. I think I'm going to pull it out and put it somewhere else. Ugh. Strawberry mint smells good, but it sure isn't, to me, good tasting tea. There's some more baby walking onions in there. And see, this is when they first start. See how it starts on the bottom? And then they move their way up. 
they'll be bursting into walking onions everywhere. Let's turn around. Now that is solar, and look how high it is, but it's doing fantastic. This is solar, even the one back here. Isn't that gorgeous? That was an electric one, but I changed it to solar. It's, it's prettier on the other side, but I can't get to it with all the plants. But it just works fantastic, and the birds like going in there because it's well hidden. And this is that hybrid that's probably a cross between a dazzling blue kale and probably collard or dinosaur kale. Could be three-way too, depending on how the bees were working all that and what seeds came up from what. That is my tree collard that fell over. A piece of it broke, but you know, it's still going okay. We'll see what happens because it fell over a while ago I showed you. See, this is a, I think this is this is either, either dazzling blue kale or it's a hybrid. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, we got a bee. Okay, and then this is purple tree collard. I've got a lot of it now. I'm getting a lot of purple tree collard spotted back here. See how it fell? I've showed you that before and it kind of wiggled down there when it fell. These are coming up from the side is what it is. So that's it. We'll see what happens. I've been staking some of them up. I put one through the fence there. I staked that one up with tool. I don't know how long it'll last, but I put that up months ago. So all in all, that's doing okay. Like I said, I haven't done a single thing in here. Nothing. Um, the tomatoes that are coming up right now, they're coming up from seed. Oh, I've got tomatoes down there. I didn't even know. They're coming up from just seeds that fell in there, just got in there. It could have been composted. Maybe I tossed a tomato walking through here and there, but I'm going to leave that. I'm going to cater to it. And then there's, like I said, there's more pur purple tree color. See, I opened this up so I can walk through here now. Gonna leave that in the pot. This one's straight in the ground. This one's straight in the ground, but it's kind of all over the place. I could do a lot of cuttings and try to get that straightened out if I want. And then this is the tree color that did die back. Now this has been buried, but I still don't know if this is alive or not. I'm waiting, let me step back. I'm waiting to see if it actually grows. If it doesn't, at some point, I'll yank it out. But that is a cutting off the original one that was here. The one that was like, wow, 15 feet tall. So I'm going to leave that just the way it is. I'll probably bury it a little bit in the ground and leave it in the container. And that's it. There's some spotted through here, some eggplant. That's an older eggplant. But you know what? I trimmed it back, and it looks like it's making a comeback. We'll see on that. In this yard, I haven't done anything. All I'm doing is feeding birds. This is the original collard. And it's really in bad shape. So we're gonna see what we're gonna do with this. I'm not sure myself. I'll probably change this whole area. I've got a lot of chairs and I've got a lot of squirrels. And I do have rabbits that come in here. Yes! Gary put up the fence for me, but you know what they do? they hop along the back and of course they can get through that so they'll come in here and then they leave and go out but I do have a lot of squirrels so I like to keep things and, the, and especially for the rabbits up on chairs and if I put something on a chair and put a tool around it t-u-l-l-e the, the squirrels won't bother it either this is how I save a lot of my garden is by tool see I put tool on here so the goldfinches won't eat it to nothing. They'll eat it all the way down to no leaves and then they end up killing the plant. But if I put some tool on part of it, they can't get to it. Well, squirrels don't like it either and neither do rabbits. Believe you me, it works. It's worth trying. $10 for a bolt. I've got the link down below so you can check it out. I have bought so much that I don't care if all of you buy it up and there's no more left because I got a bunch put away and should last me for years. And I have bought a lot, different colors. I kind of like the hunter green, and there's an emerald green. There's different greens. Gary likes the red because he wraps different fruit in it, and he likes the bright color so he can see it. It doesn't matter. As far as protecting the plants, it's whatever color works for you. Now, this is the papayas. We talk about it all the time. In this tote, it wasn't planted here on purpose. It was composted in the seeds, Gary had bought a strawberry papaya from the store. He ate it. I threw it in my compost in place. And yes, this has been here now for a couple years. It has broke the tote. It's set root. That is the root. And there's more. Let me move this. Look at that. This massive thing is a root. And it's doing really good. There was one plant. Look, at it got that big and it died back. So Gary cut it down. And now the smaller ones from old seeds are starting to grow. And look at all the flowers. 
and we've been getting fruit. This has been unreal. So you can grow in totes, but be prepared. When they're ready to leave, they'll bust right through, and that's okay with me. They can have that tote because Gary loves eating papayas. And I, I don't mind them. I'm not a real big fan of papayas, but I do eat a little bit. I'll tell you who is. Kitty loves papaya. The dogs love papaya. Isn't that something? And it's really good for you. It's got a lot of enzymes. The moringa tree is starting to make a comeback. Little leaves are starting to come up, but it's going to be a while if we don't pull those pods off, which we probably won't. It's probably better for the tree. It would flower better if and leaf out better if we pulled the pods, but I think, I think he doesn't want any more pods. We have too many. And then here, I haven't done anything here. There's mint. This is another moringa, and I'm going to trim this one down because last year I had it trimmed all the way down and the trunk went up. I don't need it that tall. Let's step outside. Yes, I'm feeding the birds here too, and they've already finished it. Look at that. All the citrus trees, we have quite a few, are doing really, really well. They are flowering and Boy, do they smell really, really good. Then, of course, we've got rosemary out here. You know, I bought three little containers at the 99 cent store, oh, years ago, years ago. And when I say years ago, five, six years ago, maybe six, seven years ago, I can't, time goes by so fast. And I planted them out here. I didn't even really pay attention to what they were. They grew into massive bushes. There's two or three here and one out front. And they just got so big, and I, it's wonderful. It's in the ground. I don't have to think about it. That's our bottle brush. Gary actually planted that quite a few years ago. When I say that, let's say three years ago, four years ago. We have a big, it's like a weeping bottle brush. See how it droops? That's the way it is. We have a big one out front, and we call it like the, the bird tree, bird of life. I mean, it was just full of life with bees and birds and everything. So he found the seedling underneath that had grown and he brought it here and catered to it. And now we've got a big flowering tree here. Because last year I think it only threw a few flowers and this year it is full. And we were so surprised to see the goldfinches have been hanging on this. And they must be getting something on here. There must be a pollen, insects. They're eating something or tiny seeds. Whoops, let's not touch the bee on the end, but they're eating something off of here. But the bees love it, all the birds love it. Let's walk over here. Oh, look, my rainbow garden. I love my rainbow garden. This is my favorite. It's just starting to grow. I think it's doing pretty good for the middle of April. Oh, I haven't done the video on this. <laughs> That is my strawberry bucket, and we've been picking strawberries, but they're just starting. But now these strawberry plants are my old strawberry plants. I actually dug them up from all over the yard. So somebody once said, you take old strawberry plants and you throw them out. A few people have said that. Well, I didn't. So I don't know if I'll get a lot of strawberries because they're old plants. But you know what? They don't look like they're doing too bad. And I didn't have any other strawberry plants to put in here, so I put them in there anyway. So, so far, so good. Garlic. I have so much garlic. I have five more garlics to plant. Full cloves. I've got to break them apart, the bulbs. And then in here, it's just starting to grow. You probably can't see it, especially I'm standing now in the shade. See that? Let me see if I can put it down so you can see it. Potato mint. Six. That means there's six little, little potatoes in here. I grew so many this past year. It's a top I made to protect that. I don't want any birds or anything to get in there and eat them. I want to make sure it takes off first. I planted one plant in a gray tote last year and it covered this whole thing. And when I went and dug it up, it was full of potato mint. There were so many of them, I couldn't believe it. I, I it was out and Gary was amazed out of one plant. And what it is, is it is in the mint family, but they grow tubers that look like potatoes. They could be anywhere from really tiny to pretty big. And they taste like potatoes. The difference is you use them like potatoes, but you can eat them raw as well. So you can chop them up and put them in salad. You know, I'm not sure, but there's squash is coming in here. Something's growing in here, but this is lettuce and more garlic. And then here, you saw me make this. I love this. This is so easy to water and service. You just turn it and I can get to it. And just think if you had this up against the wall, you could just turn it and you wouldn't have to go around it. And I just, I'm crazy about this. Finally got that tote set up. And that is just some, it's not even zucchini, it's zucchini hybrids. 
I'll show you pretty soon in a minute where they came from and I didn't have the heart to dig them in the ground so I put them all here. I moved them. Wow, about five days ago and they're doing fantastic. So I'm not going to leave that many because that would be too many. Here's my two zucchini and mustard. There is a tomato back there and there's one little sprouting broccoli from a seed from 2014 or 2015. I wrote 15 here but in my notes I put 14 but I think it's 15. So and maybe the seeds are from 14 and I bought them in 2015. That's probably it. The two zucchini are doing really good. I think they're about ready to start to throw flowers. See, you can probably just see there's flowers just starting. And then I've got some, these are walking onions. No, they're not. Yes, they are. See, I like, see how labels are fantastic. This is from the gray totes. If you haven't, if you've got totes and you haven't watched that video, watch that one, but I have a whole lot more to come on tote lids because I am doing a ton of stuff now with tote lids. Tomato plants, broccoli, that's broccoli there, broccoli there. And then I've got this zucchini. I know that because it's labeled. I'm now labeling things and those are beets growing down there. Then this is, got an elephant garlic, one elephant garlic. How do I know? Because it's labeled. See, this is the difference. This is a Sharpie pen I used, but I also buy, see how black this is? I don't know if you can see that. They have one that's called Extreme and it will not fade and it doesn't fade. I will have to say, everything I've used with the Extreme doesn't fade. That one faded a little bit. But otherwise, I think this Extreme is better. It's worth the extra buck to buy that, in my opinion. Look at the sugar cane. Look at, look at, look at. I don't know if you saw the video. I put a little piece of sugar cane in there. That's it. That's my sugar cane. Isn't that cool? So let's see, I've got another zucchini coming up here. That's a black beauty. This is a black cobra. It came up under the big black cobras I have on the driveway. And I grabbed this and put it in here and I labeled it. So I will remember. These are all onions that I bought from Texas. They are doing fantastic. This is like a Chinese cabbage bok choy I put in here. And then of course my mustard. I've got that going there. More garlic. And what do I have here? Okay, these are three Black Beauty squash seeds that didn't sprout. And I put them in there and I see this one started and something took a bite out of it. So we'll see what happens. I've got just in a paper cup, I want to transfer it. I started a parsley. And then I've got more. These are walking onions. This is a rose bush. All from a cutting I started in with my lettuce. I think it was my one of the vegetable plants I started with. Look at the mustard. Now this lettuce, isn't that gorgeous? My romaine lettuce, this is like the healthiest, best looking lettuce I've seen in a long time that is going to seed. So I'm going to let it go to seed. I'm going to collect the seed and then just crush it with my hand all over the top of a tote and start picking out the baby lettuce I want and transplanting them into buckets and pots. And I have had endless lettuce this year. See, there's a lettuce. These are all little Korean melons coming up, which will have to be moved. That is purple passion you probably really can't see it, it's too small. But in here, that's asparagus, purple passion. So we'll see how that goes. And then here is just squishing tomatoes and planting tomatoes. This is some cucumber I started, I put it in a plastic bag. As soon as they started to sprout, I put them in here and I'm transferring them into other areas, which they're growing fantastic. And this is a sugar baby watermelon, my first seed I grew. This is also a rooting of a mushroom plant. So that's pretty much it. Oh, I'll let you peek at my project. Look at this. A hummingbird. I'm figuring I'll just sit it somewhere. It's a cement hummingbird. And I've got to open that ball up today. I did that. That's another ball. I'm doing a few different balls. So that's it. I haven't done anything here yet. I'm almost ready to go there. I did plant my blueberries in here along with garlic. So I've got all that going. And that also is a rose that I dug up. It was a rose cutting that was growing in the plant, so I gave it its own pot. This is a water fountain, water feature. See, they don't have to be round. We'll have to get into how I made this one. This is beautiful. Look at the leaf pattern on it. This is the simplest, easiest thing anybody can make with materials you've got in your house. All you need is a little bit of concrete. And you know what? A bag of concrete, I don't even know, 60 pounds, whatever. It's like three bucks. And if you ever bought that and got that to your house, you'll have it for the longest time to make all kinds of projects. You can split it with somebody too. Okay, let's keep walking. Oh, that moringa is going to come back. See, this tote now has holes that face that moringa tree. 
And so when I water this, and you know how I do it, all the leaves and branches and everything, kitchen scraps, everything's in there. I don't believe I even have any potting soil in there. I think it's just soil I picked up from everywhere. That will feed this plant. And it's just going to do fantastic. All the totes do that. Let's go back through here. I'm just spotting some geraniums around. Oh, this is the papayas. We must stop here. This is like, gosh, I want to go way up because the sun is there. Isn't that amazing? And then it threw these big branches down here. Look at the size. These are the Mexican papayas. They are absolutely huge. And I have to wrap tool around here because sometimes things try to climb up to get them. And the tool does a lot of times make a lot of the animals leave so they won't go over the tool. And there's a yellow one. I think he left it too long. We have so many he doesn't pick them all the time. I'm got, I don't know if I'm going to plant in that container. That's a cut off round container Gary had. But here's a tote. And I threw some seeds in there, like some extra zucchini hybrid seeds I didn't want to grow, and they didn't grow. I was testing seeds. So I threw some more seeds in there, and they didn't grow. So I threw a few more, and I thought, ah, it's not going to grow. Well, guess what? Now i got too many. And that's where I pulled out handfuls to put there. I really don't want it, because I'm really, this year, want to get serious and plant things I only really want. See, now it's getting cloudy again. But, um... That's okay. I, if I saved it, it was something I liked. So that's why it's okay. But it's not something I'm going to plant in a lot of my totes that are going up like on my chairs or even up against the wall. I want to know what I'm planting. I'm pl I want to plant some different types of zucchini because zucchini is my favorite. All right, here I'm going to get something in here I have not. All these totes that you see, and we have talked about it, they're here to feed the papayas. Let me step back. The papayas are heavy feeders. Your squash are heavy feeders. Your tomatoes are heavy feeders. You've got plants that are heavy feeders. Plants that are not, like your carrots, your turnips, your radishes, those are not heavy feeders. You feed them too much, you'll end up with a beautiful green plant and no root. Well, on these things, they are heavy feeders. I mean, look how much food they produce, how much fruit they produce. Even squash, think of how big the squash are are and think of the tomatoes how many tomatoes those are all heavy feeders but for papaya they're such heavy feeders that if you don't feed them they simply won't produce most of the time they will not produce i mean in the wild this is really a video on itself i should be doing in the wild mother nature would be dropping all those big papayas at the feet of the plant they would burst open they would rot into the ground which again is plant food animals would come eat them and and it would just rot they would be growing just full out of the plant food they were developing themselves but of course when you grow them in your yard you're not letting them drop and rot hopefully you're picking them up and you're using them and so the ground is too clean kind of like avocados if you got avocado trees and you keep raking underneath and cleaning it up, you're gonna, usually you won't have a lot of avocado, avocados because they are feeding off of their own leaves as well. They need that mulch of their leaves under there because as the leaves pile, it creates plant food for avocado trees. Well, it's very similar to the papayas. Oh, it's getting really windy now. Look at that. That's what blew all the clouds away. So. You, you kind of have to step back sometimes if you're not sure why something isn't working and you're doing everything right. Sometimes I step back and go, what's going on? I mean, we had the papayas out here, but we didn't get any fruit. And I wasn't sure myself. And I told this story. So I went to this man's house. I saw it. he had all kinds of papayas growing in his yard. And I went over there. He spoke Spanish. I spoke English. He spoke no English and I speak no Spanish. But you know what? We talked for about 20 minutes and I could understand he had broken English to tell me pick, he said, pick flowers, pick flowers, he was telling me, and put them down there. Well, I under, I realized he was talking about the fruit and the leaves and everything. He was composting all the leaves and a lot of the fruit underneath the plant. And that's when I realized Oh yes, they're heavy feeders. So as soon as I got these totes set up and see where the holes are, and when you water them, they go by the roots of the plant. That's when we started producing so many papayas because of that. So if you've got a papaya plant, 
once it gets some size, and it doesn't take a whole lot of size to start producing flowers and fruit, they can start producing flowers at really a small size. Start feeding them, and it's really good if you can make your own food. And that means simply kitchen scraps, leaves, compost. Make your own compost. I don't compost, I don't feed anything that I buy, but you can buy plant food if you want. I just put the containers there and throw leaves and kitchen scraps and whatever, and I water that tote, and that tote has holes. See the holes? And when I water it, it waters around this pot where the papayas grew in, and a lot of them grew in pots because they came up from my own compost. I dragged them out of my yard out here. And that's what's feeding them. I keep my holes on my totes up. Because otherwise, this beautiful pepper tree that has a nesting cooper hawk in there again this year, they nested last year and they're nesting now, will send its roots into my containers, including plants in the ground. It will rob the plants in the ground, nutrients and water. But with my containers, they'll go in the roots and they will take water and food from my plants. They'll drown them. They'll block the holes. I'll go to water them. It turns like an aquarium of water and it will kill my own plants because they're they're trying to get all the water is what they want, water and food. But when my holes are above and higher, I have no root problems. The roots cannot come out of the ground and go up and out because roots will air prune. Now, if I cover the holes with wood chips, they can go along the wood chips and they can get in there. So if you've got a root problem and you want to grow in containers, then do that. Simply Make sure your holes are higher. And you know what? Some of those along the wall, I have not started any of those yet. You've seen them last year. Oh my gosh. Last year, all those, as soon as I get my zucchini in there, they will burst into such beautiful big green plants full of fruit all year. We'll keep getting so much fruit into the winter. And it's just amazing how much squash we get. But some of them were older totes before I thought about it. And they do have holes on the bottom. And yes, between that little pine tree there and this big beautiful pepper tree, and there's her nest up there. She is sitting, probably about ready to hatch if they haven't hatched already. Those trees, those two trees, will send their roots into my totes and just block them up and take all the nutrients and water that they can from them. So, easy fix. Step back, think about it. That's what I had to do and go, Mm -mm, no more holes on the bottom. So any of the new ones have holes. You probably can see them along the bottom in the front. They're about one to two inches up and you're going, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, you have water in there. You can't leave water in with your plants. I know, I hear that all the time. Okay, I can't leave water in there with my plants. You know what? We're in Southern California, we get no rain. It doesn't matter how often I water because those plants will send their roots down and they will suck that water up. So they appreciate it. I'm going by the fruit I'm getting, so I'm not worried about it. But it works for me and I don't have to deal with roots. Here is my pride and joy. The chair garden I set up last year. Now, I haven't done anything yet, but you know what? This has been the easiest, most wonderful keyhole garden I have ever made. Chair garden I've ever made. This is a keyhole garden. A keyhole garden is something that you step into you can reach everything, service everything, pick and clean and do what you want everything without reaching. Everything is right at your fingertips. And the way this one is set up, you can go around the outside as well. Just simply a few resin lawn chairs that I painted. I painted these chairs actually now 20, close to 20 years ago because people were getting rid of them because the white was coming off. Here's another one we just recently picked up out of the trash. We went somewhere, our car broke down. We had to drop it off and I yelled to Gary, there's a chair on the side of the road somebody threw out by the trash. And he goes, I can't stop. I said, just stop as soon as there's nobody there. He stopped, I jumped out, threw it in the back of the truck. Look at that. This chair is a perfect candidate to be painted. When they are breaking down like that, they hold the paint. Oh, there's a couple chips now, but a lot of the chips are from me stacking them. So I was using these chairs for birthday parties we had here for my grandkids, and then I would stack them. So they got a little scraped up because we would just stack them all because we didn't need them all out here. And then last year I decided with everything going on, I'm going to make it a keyhole. Well, you could call it a keyhole garden. I just call it my chair garden. But 
like I said, this has been fantastic. That one's even got a cracked seat. That dark blue one, now that one I didn't paint. That one came that way. I bought that one 30 years ago, and it is still going strong. But the rest of them were all painted. And the paint I used to get, I haven't got, I, this year I ordered online. But the paint I've been getting is I would go to Home Depot and Lowell's, and they have tester paint where I'm not sure how they work it, but I guess you buy paint, and then when you buy the big gallons or whatever, they give you back their money, and then they put the tester paint out there for like a bucket can. They're small cans, but you know what? I can paint three chairs easy with one can. So I would go all the time and look, and they had a mint green, and they had this red and this purple. and So I would just pick up, and there was a kind of an orange color. They're odd colors. It's not my color I would pick, but you know what? For 50 cents. But but you can actually buy the cans on their website for four dollars a can and they ship it to your house free because they think you're buying paint so i have ordered this year blue green yellow red so i've ordered a few cans and that's how i did my rainbow garden but all in all i have been so happy with this easiest to take care of i drag this chair over here right now because i've been starting to do some trimming i am not going to empty out any of the soil in any of these gray totes. Every gray tote drains well. I have it draining into these floral tubs and then I rewater it. Everything goes back because you know how rich my soil is. And it has just worked out fantastic, easy to maintain, easy to take care of. The soil itself is so great that the plants are trying to come back. I mean, these are all tomato plants. This, though, are tomatillos. I recognize them by the leaf. But these are tomato plants coming up. I've got a lot of different things coming up in here. Look at all the lettuce. Now, the birds got in here. The white crown sparrows got in here. And they have been eating my lettuce, but now... I'm going to start seeing them grow again because it was all, it's also the goldfinches, but the white crowns were more vigorous and eating greens along with seeds. They're not real big insect eaters, but they do like greens and seeds of white crowns. They left. About three days ago, they disappeared. We saw two yesterday and a couple the day before. I have seen none today. And they're amazing birds. They come in by the hundreds and thousands. They live here pretty much all winter. And then come spring, they wait, and when the time is right, they all leave. They're all gone. You would think, wow, they got so much food. I mean, look what they did to the lettuce in here. They got so much food, but see, they're starting to grow back because they're leaving now. Well, whatever they eat, they nest up north, and they can go as far as Canada, I believe. Whatever they eat, they know they're going to get up there. We'll be ready for them. So I don't know what it is exactly, but they know they've got that clock. Nature gave them that clock, it's time to migrate, but they'll be back at the end of fall is when they'll all show up again and they'll kind of wreak havoc on my garden again at that point. So Gary says, I don't miss them. I kind of do, they're so pretty, but now we're gonna have all kinds of stuff coming in. The Orioles are showing up. You've got the house finches breeding all over. We've got the wrens, the bush tits. Hummingbirds have nests everywhere around the house. So we've got other birds and they kind of rotate through. And like I said, some birds stay here all year round. Some birds come through. Some of them come here just to nest. Other birds come here simply to eat, go on their way. And like I said, we've got birds from all kinds. This plant, I'm going to leave. This is done fantastic. I strung it up the other day, trimmed it down, and it's got so many new tomatoes starting on it. I hope you can see it. Oh, it's so windy. The tomatoes there, you probably can't even hear me, the wind's probably blowing the camera. Tomatoes there, I've got tomatoes all through here. I'm gonna keep that. And like, I, oh, that's what I was telling you. I am not changing any of the soil. All the soil is gonna stay. What I'm going to do is top it. I'm going to come back in. See how far it fell down? It drains well. If it wasn't draining well, then yes, I would dig out a little bit, add in more leaves and branches and kitchen scraps and whatever I could find around here, chopped up weeds. But since it's draining so well and the soil is it's really quite nice when you look at it. I think it's really, really nice. I'm just going to top it. That will give it new, fresh plant food, nature's plant food, and then I'm going to go for it. So I'm almost there. I'm just kind of analyzing like here, too many tomatoes came up and they've been here all year. I shouldn't say that, I don't know how long they've been here. I'm gonna kind of go through. The pepper plant wants to make a comeback. Pepper to me here is more important to me than the tomato, only because 
Pepper plants, plants are a little more temperamental than the tomatoes here. The tomatoes will grow anytime. Pepper plants, when they're happy, I want to keep them happy and I want them to keep going. So I'm going to analyze each one as they go. I had watermelon growing in here last year. I had all kinds of zucchini growing in here last year. We were, we were picking three and four huge zucchini off of each plant constantly. We'd pick them and more would come. You would think you would not get that much out of an 18 gallon tote. Let me tell you something, you get a lot of food. A lot of plants can grow in an 18 gallon tote. You grow zucchini, you can put, grow some parsley in there. You can grow celery, but celery has such a massive root system that you're better off to plant other things in there. Don't grow mint in there because of the amount of roots that they get, unless you don't care, but they will take over. Garlic chives, you can grow with them. Lettuce, you can grow with them. There are so many things you can grow with the zucchini or tomatoes or peppers or cucumbers. I did not grow cucumbers in here last year. I do not believe so. A lot of different tomatoes. So I'm not sure yet what I'm going to grow in here. I've got a tote that's fairly empty. I spotted in some lettuce in here a while ago. And like I said, the white crowns were nibbling on it, but now they're gone. So they're just starting to grow because there were, like I said, this is no joke. There was hundreds and hundreds, if not a thousand plus. So now a lot of that stuff will grow back, but I don't need that. I'm gonna grow so much new fresh lettuce with all the seeds that are gonna be ripe soon and ready to grow. I've gotta wait till they flower, wait till the bees do their thing. And as soon as it starts to dry, I've gotta cover them or the goldfinches will eat them. So I will cover them with tulle. I'll collect all those seeds and I'll pick and designate a tote like I did here. And that's what I did here. Just sprinkle in a bunch of seeds. And these things are the easiest, easy I'll, I'll sacrifice one to show you you can just pull them out look at this and plant that and you've got a lettuce you're going well why are, why'd you do that and leave the lettuce because I got so many I'll just stick it back there now see what you did you made me feel like no oh, don't do that but anyways that's how easy it is to do lettuce I've got a video on lettuce and I'll put the link underneath because lettuce is so forgiving that when you grow it like this, you don't have to put it in a paper bag or plastic bag and sprout them or even put them in a tray and plant one lettuce at a time. Find the flower pot, get some decent soil, sprinkle in a bunch of lettuce in there, let it grow and then literally with a little fork, a little knife or a spoon, pull out the ones you want, start planting them in separate containers because when you give them a separate container, they get really big, be it a bucket, a tote, a flower pot, a milk container, anything, food container. And when they're separate, one or two in a container, they get really, really big and they just keep growing and growing. But when you've got them in a cluster, they won't. Again, this goes back to mother nature, something to do where there's too many. So they kind of become stunted and small, but the moment you move them out, they just burst into life and they get really, really big. So lettuce is to me the easiest thing. I was struggling too. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I would try to grow lettuce and heck, why are they so small? Why are they? Well, I figured out quickly that they really want their own container and then whatever the communication is in the soil, they now know they have their own container and they just grow and grow and grow. You have too many in there, they stay compact. I guess so, this way they all can stay alive until the right moment for the right ones to grow. So, you know, we're all learning. We're all learning. I'm learning, you're learning, some of you are learning with me. We're all learning because you'll, you, all of a sudden it's like a light goes off. Wow, why didn't I think of that? You know. I didn't even think about stopping to step back and think how nature's doing it. I mean, I can go to the store and buy the best plant food I want, but then nature's not buying plant food. So where is she getting, she or he? <laughs> where is mother nature getting plant food? She's making it. Well then why can't I? If she can do it, I can do it most certainly. And it works. So we're all learning and don't get discouraged if it doesn't work. Let's walk over here. I should talk about that. I had a black thumb. Let me tell you something, this is the truck bed. I'm gonna put some buckets in here and get some other things growing. I had a black thumb too. Years ago, I had a black thumb. And I couldn't grow worth beans anything. I couldn't even grow house plants. I did have a small garden and get some things growing, but really, I think it was the house plants that used to die on me. Let's walk over to the fountain. And when you have to grow something, and there was a time in my life that I needed to get some extra money to pay bills and figured out I could do house plants and sell them at a yard sale, suddenly I'm growing all kinds of house plants. It's not that we have a black thumb. 
We don't have the interest. If you don't have the true interest in something, it's just not going to work. Okay? It's not going to work. But let's see, that's a little slow. Let's see if we can wipe this one. Sometimes you can wipe it. I have other tricks of getting things going. No, it's just growing, going slow. The sun must be starting to tilt in a way. And that's the thing. If you don't have the interest, you're not going to put that little oomph into growing. you got to get the interest. And sometimes, you know, it's like what came first, chicken or the egg? you got to, sometimes it's like you try, you don't like it, you don't know. Mm. You know, what? once you start to get something growing, then the interest gets more and more. Heck, why do you think I have so many totes? It started with one tote. You know, and I went and planted something, and then it's like, wait a minute. That really works. And then you go back, and you get more totes, and more totes. Now keep in mind, Gary swore he would not grow in totes. I'm using this as an example. Most certainly you can do all this in the ground. He swore he wasn't going to grow in totes. Oh, my life, life's got to be easy. It's got to be in the ground. He got all those wood chips, which is great. And then he started dealing with roots. He started dealing with squirrels. He started dealing with all kinds of stuff. And he found out that he can get totes in his garden and he has more control. I don't know how many cases. I'm, I've lost track that he just had me buy. There, sometimes you can catch these cases of, from Sterilite, these totes, on sale. And he had me buy him three cases. That was eight in a case. Then he wanted three more cases. Then he wanted, what did we end up buying? Another couple cases. I, I'm going to be honest, I have not been down to his garden in the past couple weeks. But I think he's got so many totes set up now. It's unbelievable. But he's going to have better luck. And even his ubase, he was gr uh, growing in the ground. He had to dig those things up. Some of them are 15 pounds. And he says in this hard soil we've got here, it took such strength to dig them up that he is now doing them in totes. So he's got all kinds of stuff he's doing in totes. You can do anything in totes. Totes are nothing more than a raised bed. This is a line of totes. I can have them closer together. I can have them shaped like my chair garden. That's a keyhole. That's what they call a keyhole. Something you can step inside. Something you don't have to reach and climb over to get your food. You put it what you need in the fashion you need that's going to work for you in your garden. If this isn't going to work, you don't like the looks, do it differently. You don't want to put it on chairs? Put it on milk crates. Put it on anything. Put it on blocks. Get cement blocks. Put cement blocks down. You could do it any way you want if you want it off the ground and you don't want to bend. Then put it on blocks. Put it on whatever way. I'm going to sip for a second and then we're going to end this. Put it whatever way you think will work for you. Here against the wall, I figured it would work that way for me. And it does. And here, I went this way. I may put another keyhole garden here and maybe next time... I won't put it on chairs, but let me tell you, I have hundreds of ground squirrels here, not counting the tree squirrels that go through here. And they get into stuff, but for some reason, they don't bother too much with the chairs. Now I have rabbits. So whatever I decide to grow on the ground, I have to think about those little critters here. Now I can tool a lot and that, that I can do, but I also do know, don't ask me why, they don't seem to bother the zucchini or squash. So I can grow squash on the ground, but they will bother lettuce, of course. Uh, sometimes they'll bother the Swiss chard. Certain things, certain critters will bother and certain things they won't. Not too much with the tomatoes. Nah, I've seen a squirrel come by and grab a tomato and it was so funny. I wish I had the camera on. I had it on, but it wasn't taping. I was watching this squirrel try to pick a tomato off a plant once and I was looking and watching him on the camera and then Gary was coming and the squirrel heard it. it's like a cartoon heard him coming and he was fighting with the tomato plant as hard as he could to pull that tomato off fast before Gary came and he did he got the tomato and ran so fast before Gary came around the corner so certain things they'll bother more than others but here I could do more squash I just don't know if I want to only because I don't know if I need any more there I'm going to get cucumbers going and maybe some beans I'm going to get more totes in there Gary put that little that's actually not a fence that you see there I think it's the inside of refrigerators he found a refrigerator and he gets different things to grow in he does grow in that too and they had racks so he put that up like a little fence and that does keep the rabbits out it's not going to keep the squirrels out but it does keep the rabbits out didn't really plant in there last year but then I didn't plant up against that wall either where the red tote and the blue tote are changing up a few things and replanting but no matter what no matter what, 
however way I decide to set it up, it's got to be easy. It's got to be something I can just walk along with a hose, water everything twice a week, let's say in the winter and fall. Um, I should say winter and early spring twice a week because sometimes fall here is hot and I might do it every day or every other day. It's got to be easy. I don't want to be watering a tote there and then walking over there and watering a tote there and then walking down there and watering a tote there and then going down by Gary's Bees down there that are all down there. and That would be driving me crazy. That would be literally, I'd be spending hours just watering. But here, I can get my watering done so fast because it's simply walking in a straight line. And in here, this is nothing. I get this done in a matter of seconds, really. Uh, less, in a couple of minutes, if that, watering the whole thing because you just walk in and spin around. So while you set things up, think about what way it's going to work for you. Think about what way is going to be easy for you. If you make it easy, you will make it permanent in your life because you'll be successful and happy and producing some food. If you make it difficult, you'll be angry and tired and thinking, I can just go to the store and buy it. Who cares if it costs more and it's sprayed with God knows what or whatever. You'll just do it that way. Make it easy. Make it, what, make it the way it will work for you. And I guarantee you, you will make it permanent in your life. And not only that, if you have kids, they'll watch you and they'll do it too. And there's nothing more joyful than going out and being able to get some food. It doesn't have to be everything, but something out of your own yard, something you grew, something you know is really fresh and that you actually produced on your own, but make it easy. And I do have to make my own soil because as you know, we have so many totes. If I had to go fill everything with store-bought soil, it would cost a fortune. I cannot afford it. So in desperation, I came up with loading the whole bottom with pieces of wood, even going around and collecting from Gary's wood chips, big pieces of wood and branches and leaves, green and brown, piling it up with kitchen scraps, you know, anything that came out of the kitchen that rotted, we didn't eat, eggshells, trimmings, pile that all in there and then top to top with a few inches of either potting soil or some good soil you might find around your yard. And it makes things a whole lot cheaper. And you know what? It works better. So with that, I just, you know, I don't know how I got off of that. This is supposed to be a garden tour, but you know what? We're all getting ready to plant. We're getting ready to plant, and I was been testing seeds, and I know certain things will grow. Might be a little early for watermelon right now. Certain seeds and certain plants like it really warm. My Korean melons are going to stay small for a while because they like it really warm. And some of you are still under snow, I know, but it's coming soon. But you want to think about it how you want to do it. And when you think about it and you're ready, then you can just go for it. And I've got seeds going in the house too in a, in a new system that I'm doing. Not just paper cups, but I'm doing both. So think about what's going to work for you and make your life easier. And then it will become part of your life. And that's what I'm hoping for. That, you know, some of you will find out that this is really cool. And it will be part of your life forever. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. And i got to bring this broccoli in for Kitty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. And have a wonderful day. Kitty, I just came up from the garden. You know what I grabbed you? A couple different pieces of broccoli. <gasps> Your favorite. Okay. That's it for now. You like that, don't you?